everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Winsor & Newton's Cadmium Free Red watercolor. So this is going to be just a little spotlight video on this color. So we're going to be talking about the opacity, the quality of the paint, and I'm going to be giving you some comparisons to other red pigments in my collection and speculating on which pigment that I think this is because I do have some very strong feelings of which pigment I think this is. So if you're interested in seeing all that, uh, just keep right on watching. I'm also going to show you over here how some of this, these colors mixed out um, with that cadmium free red. So Winsor & Newton released a line of cadmium free colors. They have the red, cadmium free yellow. Essentially what these are, these are hue or replica colors that are going to be cadmium free. The little thing that's a little bit shady about it is that while you do get light fast information, um, like a permanence rating of A on this one for example, and you you know get the opacity rating and things like that, you're not getting pigment information. And that's sort of my beef with these cadmium free hue replica colors with within all brands, Liquitex is guilty of this too, they don't give you the pigment information. Why does that matter? Well, it might not matter so much to a lot of people, but especially if you're a professional artist and these things matter to you, especially if you're gonna be selling your artwork, you'd wanna know what that pigment is. Now, of course, I can't tell you 100% for sure what pigment is in this tube, but doing some comparisons of my own research and some testing here, I feel like I have a pretty strong feeling, a pretty good indication. So up here I have some comparisons. I did a black strip of ink along the top here. I used my Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star Matte Ink. I trust this ink. I don't trust any other ink because it always runs on me. I went ahead and I swatched them out to compare the different colors and then I put a swatch of the mass tone over the ink to see how opaque it is. I did some flow tests and some mixing tests. So here we have Winsor Newton Cadmium Free Red mystery pigment. We have Sennelier's French Vermilion PR242 and they're the only company that I know of, the only manufacturer that has that pigment currently. Daniel Smith Scarlet Pyrol which is PR255. Windsor Red which is a Pyrol Red PR254. Napfall Red by M. Graham PR122. Pyrol Red by M. Graham, which is also, of course, PR254. And one that I didn't swatch because I knew it wasn't worth swatching um, in comparison to this color is Sennelier's Red, which is also Pyrol Red, PR254. But you can see just how much more blue that one is versus like Windsor Red, for example. This one is definitely not um, comparable to Windsor Newton's Cadmium free red or any cadmium red for that matter. Now this small five milliliter tube cost me eleven dollars and two cents up at my local Hobby Lobby. That is pretty comparable with how much you would expect to pay for a cadmium red so the point in buying these cadmium free colors is definitely not to save money. Back in the day I think that was kind of a, a driving force behind your choice to choose um, cadmium hues might be that the genuine cadmium pigment is much more expensive and you would be able to save some money or it might just be a personal preference to go with other pigments which has been my preference in the past. I personally prefer pyrrol pigments or um, yeah pyrrol pigments would be usually my go-to choice over cadmium red just because they're clearer, they're more transparent, they don't granulate and ca genuine cadmium pigments are um, a little bit dirty to be honest. They don't mix quite as clean so it's you can always make a clean color dirty but you can't make a dirty color clean again so those are some of my reasonings behind it but the pyrrol pigments are usually just as expensive so it's not about saving money it's about personal preference. Now recently in recent years some reasons to go and get an alternative to cadmiums have been due to health concerns, issues of toxicity, I'm not here to debate or discuss that. I know that in some parts of the world, cadmium has been banned in paints. There are some people who will argue, um, you know, the risk from using a cadmium paint is so low, it's ridiculous that we're taking these precautions. And there are others 
who will tell you, no, it's not ridiculous, it's absolutely not safe for us to have it. I am not here to give my opinion on that, to be very clear. If you want to have a discussion, as long as it's respectful in the comment section below, that's fine. But that's not the point of this video at all. I'm just comparing the cadmium free paint. So the color that I found it to be most comparable to in my collection would be Daniel Smith's Scarlet Pyrol, which is PR255. And um, even in the way that the opacity of it, and even in the way that it flowed, you can see that Scarlet Pyrol is a heavier pigment. And so it's not gonna flow quite as well. Here's the Daniel Smith's, here's the Winsor Newton side-by-side -side of flow test and side-by-side -side swatched out here. You can see they are nearly identical. Not just in the way they handle, the way they mix, the way they flow, and in similarly in their opacity. It's my opinion, and I can't say for 100% certain, but I, if I had to take a wager, I would bet this is PR255. This is Scarlet Pyrrol. I wish they would just say what the pigment is, but now, does that mean that this is a scam in some way and I'm telling you not to buy this? No, absolutely not. I think this is a good quality paint and I'm happy with my purchase. But the reason that I want to let you know that is because you might already have Scarlet Pyrrol from Daniel Smith and I just don't want you to end up purchasing the same things over and over again in your collection. You might already have something that's very similar or even identical and you don't need to make this purchase. So I just want to let you guys know that. The color is so super similar. It's almost spot on. I would say that the Winsor & Newton's Cadmium Free Red is just a hair more neutral as where the, the Scarlet Pyrrol is a hair more warm, but so tiny of a difference. I mean, it's nearly indistinguishable. They lift very similarly, although I think Winsor & Newton's lifted a bit better. That might have more to do with formulation than pigmentation. But just even the way they flowed, I did my best to copy the same technique and pattern here. Obviously, you can't do it exactly, but you can see that pigment, particularly PR255, it doesn't move quite as well uh, because it is heavier. When I squeeze this paint out of the tube, it is very thick. It's very thick, it's very heavy with pigment. There's no shortage of pigment here, and for that reason, I think that the price point is spot on. I do think it's fair, because it's, it is a lot, they packed a lot of pigment in here, and I think, you know, that kind of helps with the opacity factor as well. More pigment usually is gonna be more opaque, especially when it comes to pyrrol. You can see here, as I swatched it out, I blended it down, um, and then here I kind of, I was trying to force it to granulate. I was hoping against hope that it, it might have something in it that would make it granulate, but it didn't. So what would you be missing between the difference between a cadmium free and a genuine cadmium paint? If you love granulation, unfortunately you're not getting any of that here. A real cadmium red will granulate this Unfortunately, it really doesn't. Uh, over here, I mix the Cadmium Free Red with uh, Windsor Yellow Deep and Windsor Yellow. The Windsor Yellow Deep is a lot stronger, a little bit more semi-opaque, so we got bolder colors, as where the Windsor Yellow is a very clear, transparent primary yellow and um, mixed a bit more transparent, which in watercolor tends to be an advantage, especially if you like to build up many glazes. But if you like to work more a la prima or you like to charge a lot of color in all at once and you're not so big on building up many glazes, then you'd probably like the stronger colors and this would be a good pigment for you. Now over here to the left you can see I've got all my Winsor & Newton colors swatched out. Um, not necessarily in the order they are in the palette anymore, but the reason that I wanted to have something very colorful in the shot is because number one, I think it helps your eye render a more accurate um, 
color reference here if you have something to provide some context as where if I took it away you know it all might just look very similar in red tone but I feel like when you have something to compare it to and put it into context you see the colors more accurately so that's why I have that there you can see the first three that I swatched are more warm and the last three that I swatched are definitely a bit cooler these would all be categorized as a warm red though like you know pyrrol red is neutral to primary but still more warm leaning it was definitely what they considered the warm red in my Windsor and Newton uh, set that I had gotten um, and Naphthol Red is often used as a, a hue for uh, Cadmium Red as well, even though it's more transparent and definitely more blue. I think they did a very good job with this paint overall, I have to say. I do think that it is a little bit more visually eye clean than Genuine Cadmium, which I think is a good thing. It doesn't granulate like Genuine Cadmium, which again doesn't bother me because I don't like my reds to granulate, but you might. And so I want to let you know that you're not getting any granulation here. But they, the quality of this paint is excellent. It mixed very cleanly. There's no shortage of pigment here. It's very thick and heavy with pigment. And I think that if you were looking for a Cadmium Red um hue or something to replace that as an alternative because you were worried about health concerns, um, this would be a good choice. I do think it's an excellent choice and the quality of the paint is wonderful. That being said, if you already have Scarlet Pyrrol by Daniel Smith, I don't think you need this. I, I, I mean, it's of course up to you, but if you already have um, a warm Pyrrol Scarlet pigment like this, I think I genuinely believe that this is the pigment being used here. So I think it's just you're, you're, you're getting a duplicate. You're buying the same pigment over again. So that's all I wanted to say about Windsor & Newton's uh, Cadmium Free Red. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts on this pigment is. Uh, do you have this? Do you like it? What do you think? And how do you think it compares to Genuine Cadmium? I wish I had had some Genuine Cadmium here to show and compare for you guys, but it's been a long time, many, many years since I've used Genuine Cadmium in my studio, so I don't even own it anymore. But I do remember it very, very well, rest assured about that. So that's it for today's video. I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up on your way out before you go. Subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know if you'd like to see me do another video on Cadmium Free Yellow, because I might just do it. All right. Have a great day. Bye.